So far, we have seen how to solve systems of linear and nonlinear equations in two variables. What happens if we have more than two variables? So let's focus on system of equations in more than two variables. And as you are used to extension questions, let's ask you this. How can we solve the system of equations in more than two variables? using the methods that you already learned. So go ahead, pause the video here, and spend a little time thinking about it. Assuming you spend a little time thinking about what to do, let's recall how if we had a system of linear equations with two variables, and we used the elimination method Look what happened. We chose to multiply one or both equations by a number, add the two equations. So we created an equivalent system of equations that had the same solutions. And actually, if you looked at elimination method, since one of the variables disappears, we really had to line up the x's and the y's and the constants. So if we keep track of x and y in constant term, by using placeholders, we might be able to generalize the elimination method to more than two variable system of equations. So let's see if we can put what I just said in words into a mathematical notation. So if you look, the 3 and the 5 are the coefficients of x Negative 2 and 3 are coefficients of the y terms, and 6 and 2 are the constant terms. So if I organize them in rows and columns, where the first column represents x coefficients, second column represents y coefficients, last column represents the constant terms. My first row will call it r1, second row will call r2. So the rows are the individual equations from the system. When we multiply one or both by a number, that means in this terminology, I will have to multiply row 1 and create a new row 1, and a row 2 by 2 and create a new row 2. So if you do that, the top row got multiplied by 3, the second row got multiplied by a 2, and this is what your new coefficients will be. So you create an equivalent system of equations. All right, what did you do next? Since the negative 6y and 6y were lined up, we could add them and create a new equation. So if you do that here, then I can say my row 1 is going to become row 1 plus row 2. So that's my new row 1. And row 2 re remained as row 2 being unchanged. So by adding row 2 to row 1, I got a 0 for my y coordinate, which allows me to say 19x equals 22. So if I divide top row by 19, I will get my x coordinate. So my x coordinate would be 22 over 19, which you can see right there. Now, when we were doing just elimination method in the two variables, I could just take this x value and substitute it back. And so now, since we want the y coordinate, let's take a look. I need this 10 to go away, so that means I would have to subtract 10. The only way I can do that is by using row 1. So I'm going to take row 1 and keep it the same as it was before, because I don't want to touch it. It already has my x coordinate in it. But my row 2, I can subtract 10 times row 1 from it, create a new row 2. So if I do that, the top row multiplied by 10, 1 times 10 subtracted from 10 would give me a 0. 0 times 10 is nothing, so that really won't change number 6. And here I'll have 4 minus 10 times 22, which is 220 over 19. Now when I simplify that, I'll get negative 144 over 19. So now I have 6y equals that number. I can divide the row 2 by 6, and that will give me my y coordinate. 
So you can see the parallel structure. Now you might say this is way too complicated compared to what's here when we first did the elimination method. However, when you have more than two variables, three variables, four variables, then this method comes in very handy. So these operations that we use to create new rows are called elementary row operations. The matrix is what you see here. Matrix is organization of numbers in rows and columns. When you use a matrix in this particular fashion where you have the coefficients of x, coefficients of y, and then instead of the equal to sign, you just have a placeholder for the constant terms. It's called the augmented matrix. An augmented matrix is really just a representation of the system of equations in a matrix form. So let's talk about what a matrix is. Matrices, plural of matrix. A matrix is a collection of numbers organized into rows and columns. The size of a matrix is determined by the number of rows and columns it has. So for example, the number of rows will call m, number of columns will call n. So m by n matrix is basically organization of numbers in m rows and n columns. Let's take some examples. So for example, if I have a two by two matrix, I have two rows and two columns. If I have a three by three matrix, I will have three rows and three columns. It don't always have to have like three by three, four by four, two by two. You could have a two by three and so on. So a two by three matrix would have two rows and three columns. And this is how you might choose to represent a system of equations in two variables. So take a look at this example. Here's an example of an augmented matrix, which represents a three variable system of equations. And so you can see how the coefficients are First column represents the x column. Second column represents y column. Third column represents the z column. And the last column represents the constant terms. If you choose not to put this little vertical bar, that's OK too. Some people choose to put dotted line. Some people choose not to put any um, marking whatsoever in the augmented matrix. You can see how we're representing a, equation, a system of equations in three variables. So what does arithmetic of matrices look like then? So since you are so used to doing extension problems, let's see if you can figure out how to do addition of matrices. Go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do. Go with your instinct. What would be the most natural way to add, subtract, or multiply by scalars of a matrix. So to add matrices, natural way would be they must have the same size, first of all. Otherwise, you won't be able to add them. And then on top of it, to add them, you would just add component-wise. So I would add the 2 and the negative 4, negative 3 and 8, 5 and 1, and 6 and 2. Similarly, subtraction would work component-wise. Scalar multiplication, that means take the 2 and multiply every entry by 2. If you're dividing by negative 2, you would do that again for the entire components of the matrix. So that's arithmetic, add, subtract, scalar multiplication is easy. You can also multiply matrices, but that is beyond the scope of this lecture. We will do that some other time. So let's take a look and see how we can use matrices to solve systems of equations. If your three variable system representation in the matrix look like this, what does that mean? That means 1x, 0y, 0z equals 5, or really x equals 5. Second row, see if you can interpret that. That will be 0x, 
one y, zero z equals negative two, or really y equals negative two, and similarly then the last row will give you z equals seven. So ideally, if we can convert our matrix into this form, which is reduced row echelon form, that's what it's called, reduced row echelon form, or you're really creating an identity matrix in this first part here, which is diagonals are ones and the rest are zeros, then you can read off your solutions to the system. So let's take a look at this one. What happens if you have one and one, but then you have zeros in the bottom? So really you have zero equals seven. That's what the last equation is saying. That's not possible. So this will have no solution then. Because z, you cannot have any z value satisfying the last equation, so this system of equations will not have any solutions. But if you get zeros all the way at the bottom, that means that it's always true statement. That means all real values will satisfy this last equation. So you can rewrite the solution then as x plus 2t equals 5, because t is any real number that represents the z variable, and you write x and y in terms of that variable t. So there are infinitely many solutions here. So what are elementary row operations on matrices then? You can interchange rows because then you're not changing the systems of equations. You're just rewriting which equation goes first, which does not interfere in what solutions you get. You can have scalar multiples of rows because that still prevents it from changing the system of equations. You're just creating equivalent system. You can add or subtract multiples of other rows to a row. And so if the matrix represents a system of equations, basically an elementary row operations is one in which the system becomes an equivalent system with the same solutions. That operation is allowed. No other operation is allowed for you to do. So let's use the Gauss elimination method. Our goal is to create ones in the diagonal and zeros everywhere else if possible. So let's just see what happens here then. We have 4x plus 3y minus 7z equals 5. So 4, 3, negative 7, 5 are my coefficients. And you can see how the remaining coefficients are the same. So the first column is x column, second one is y, third one is z. And the last one is constant terms. So let's just work with that and see what we can do. We will refer to row 1 as the top row, R2 as second row, and R3 as the third row. So first, if I want a 1 in this first spot, you can see I already have a 1 in the x spot in the last row. So the first thing I'll do is interchange row 1 and row 2. I'll use the symbol, this double-sided arrow means interchange row 1 and row 3. So second row will remain as is. The row 3 will be occupying row 1, and row 1 will occupy row 3. So let's do that. So you can see 1, negative 2, 1, 4, which was my row 3, is now my row 1. 4, 3, negative 7, 5, which was my row 1, is now my row 3. So I've just rewritten the system so that I have the 1 in the column here. Once you have a 1, then I can make zeros in the x spots under it. Well, how do I do that? To get a 0 here, remember, you can only use multiples of the rows. So I can take the 3 and subtract 3 times row 1 from it. I can take the 4 and subtract 4 times row 1 from it. So it would look like this. I'm saying take row 2, subtract 3 times row 1 to make new row 2. Take row 3, subtract 4 times row 1 to get me my new row 3. It's very important that you write what's happening and not do it in your head, otherwise you're going to get all confused. So let's see what happens to row 2 first. 
So you can bring in your For My Eyes Only column and take a look. Row 2, so that's 3, negative 1, 6, negative 1. Then from it, subtract, so negative 3, row 1. So take row 1, multiply by negative 3, so that will be negative 3, 6, negative 3, negative 12. Okay, now combine them together. So 3 and negative 3 will give me 0. Negative 1 plus 6 is 5. 6 and negative 3 is 3. Negative 1 and negative 12 is negative 13. So this bottom here, 0, 5, 3, negative 13, will become my new row 2. Remember, I have not change the system. I've just created an equivalent system of equations by doing this to row 2. So row 3, I'm subtracting 4 row 1 from it to create my new row 3. So here is my original 4, 3, negative 7, 5 is my original row 3. Multiply row 1 by negative 4, so that will become negative 4, 8, negative 4, negative 16. Add them all up. You get 0, 11, negative 11, negative 11. So our new matrix, top row, row 1 did not change. So row 1 remained as is. Row 2 is this new row 2 that I created using this operation, elementary row operation. And this 0, 11, negative 11, negative 11 is my new row 3. All right. See if you can see what to do next. I need a 1. So here we have all 11. So we can divide row 3 by 11, which created the 1. Then we will interchange row 2 and row 3. So now I have the 1 in the second spot, in the y spot. I'm going to do the same tactics that I used before to now use row 2 to make zeros in the y spot. So go ahead and see if you can write down what to do, what row operations to do, so you get zeros in the y spots. I will give you a few moments. All right, so here we have row 1 plus 2 row 2, because multiplying by 2 and adding will give me a 0. Row 3, I would have to subtract 5 times row 2. OK, so if you do that, just check and see if you get these values. Go ahead. All right, then divide row 3 by 8. OK, so now we have the ones, we have the reduced row echelon form. So we can see that z is going to be negative 1. So you can either use substitution and go and find y and x, or you can do one more step. Create zeros above the 1 in the z column. So to do that, I will add row 1, row 3 to give me new row 1, row 2, row 3 to give me new row 2. And now I can read off my solution as x is 1, y is negative 2, and z is negative 1. And there is my solution. You can use this process to solve a system of linear equations that are 3 by 3, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, doesn't really matter. But again, pay attention. If any of the rows become all zeros, you know that there are infinitely many solutions. If any of the rows become undefined, like 0 equals 7, then you will have no solution. So pay attention to the values while you're doing the elementary row operations.